I'm Ed Jaimo, I'm Development Manager for the Surface Pro 3 product that Hanno spoke about today. And I'm going to walk you through some of the key features that enable us to make the product so thin. So compared to the previous product, this is the motherboard is about half the size of the Pro 2 product. And as you can see, that allows us to set the motherboard side by side with the batteries. And there are four batteries here, and a controller board underneath. Take a look at the motherboard. One of the thickest part of a product typically are components and connectors and the fan assembly. So one of the things we did with this product is the components that are the tall ones are on one side of the motherboard and the low profile ones are on the opposite side. So when the, the engineers have designed the circuit board they had to take all of that component heights into account. We also designed some custom connectors with, you can see these gold pads, and we don't actually, sh ha sh aren't showing you the connectors today, but they mate to some fle flex cables, and these are extremely low profile. They're the ones on the side of the board that are, is the low profile side of the board. Some of these go to the display, some go to the battery, and some go to the, the charging cable. The airflow in the system is, was a particular challenge here. If you look through the vent, you can see there's an open space underneath the right-hand speaker for the air to come in. So the air comes in the vent, and it comes up, and if you imagine this, the fan is located would be down in the product, so the air comes in the top of the fan, and then gets emitted out the three sides of the fan this way. So the air intake here, down through the center, and then out through the side of the fan. I don't know if you can see the edges of the heat sink. So this fan is, we've integrated the heat sink and the fan together in one assembly and made it extremely thin. These are, there are two heat pipes, liquid filled, and a heat spreader sitting on top of the CPU, GPU, Intel's i7, i5, or i3, depending on which model you, the customer purchases. Next to the heat sink and the processor is the power supply for the system, dual channel dynamic RAM, and high capacity SSD, this is mSATA, up to half a terabyte. On the top side of the board, toward the top, where you have this, we call it the antenna window, it's made of plastic, it's where the RF energy comes out. And on, um, as you can see on the top side, there are two antennas for the 2x2 MIMO. Under this area is the circuitry for the radio, and so it's close to the transfer receive antenna, dual band, 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and this the second antenna does receive only. And if we look on the opposite side, you'll see a coax that runs from this side of the radio to the second antenna. This is one of the few products where we've integrated the antenna system and the radio together on one motherboard to save space. Underneath this lid is a controller chip that manages the battery and the cooling system, and we have special code that runs uh, just for that purpose. On the side, you can see USB, uh, excuse me, display port here, and USB 3.0 here. And on, on the side, there's also another connector, which is used for power. And we, we simply remove the flex cable that goes from this connector to the motherboard in that area. That's pretty much a walkthrough of the Surface Pro 3 product. Can you talk about the hinges that was newly added? Sure. Uh, not the hinges, the, um, the keyboard. The keyboard. Yeah. So, if we, if we take the lower chassis over this keyboard, Earlier in the in the video, we saw how the keyboard attaches, and then how you get stability on your lap by folding the keyboard down. And you can see magnets in the corner of the chassis, made with magnets in the keyboard. And of course, the fabric's been removed here to enable you to see inside. And when it when it when it locks in there, those those magnets can hold it. It's better for me to hold it in slightly vertical position. How it locks in. And gives you a stable, a stable surface. 
In order to make the keyboard as light as possible, in the areas where there's no circuitry, we put a honeycomb plastic grid to give it stiffness. If we open it up, you can see the back of the keys. See an electronic control board with a flex cable that goes down to the mating connector that would go into the, the surface device. And then our new track pad. This is the back of the new track pad with a mechanical switch. So it gives you good tactile feel. Plus the top of the grid has um, a glass beaded surface to reduce friction and make it really easy to navigate. And two finger gestures now work on this particular track pad. If just for a moment you saw earlier the hinges that, that go down all the way 150 degrees, you can see the hinge mechanism now open on the, on the end and from the inside. And if I close it, you can see how the hinge mechanism occupies all of that space inside. So it was also a challenge getting a hinge mechanism that had good uh, feel to it. So it, it pulls out to the first position fairly easily, it all snaps out, and then from then on you have a const really constant force all the way back to the final 150 degree position.